What's going on, everyone? It's my back again. John is in his mother's bedroom. I can confirm that because I put the wallpaper up while I was... <laughs> I'm not going there. Right, John, yes. you just sent me a message, a, a, a little video, which I was going to put in the video, like some of it, but I thought you might want to start the video off. Well, I have to send you the video saying... We're, we're in the money, we're, we're in the money. The money. <laughs> the under sevens, the under eights, the under nines, the under tens, the Premier League, the Super Cup, the Women's League, we're winning everything. Listen, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We've had some positive news that's been breaking from a lot of sources today um, regarding Bell and Downing. That is, yeah, these two people are going to be backed by the Dell family, if I'm right in saying they're the ones who are behind the computer. But Listen, this is the best and most positive news as fans we've had for months, probably years. Now, we want this to come to fruition. There's five different bidders, apparently, um, who want to buy Everton. I think Mashiri's playing the blinder with 777, by the way, but I'll let you get onto that. He's absolutely rinsed them. He's bankrupted them. To keep the club afloat and now we've gone past this 31st of may see us we're going to be rich and we'll pay it off through Klarna a ten of a month brilliant um so what i will say is we need to get down to ikea we need to get the biggest trophy cabinet out of there put it in bramley more because it's going to be full in two years <laughs> toffees oh well let, let's talk about it then you, you're right and 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 we are right to be excited and look maybe we're being over excited but the the reason is and you've just alluded to it john it's been so negative now for the last three years it's <laughs> nice to have some positive news so let let's talk about it five different people consortiums are interested in buying our pride and joy the best football team in england the best football team in the world the best football team that play in blue anywhere on this universe that's everton football club but one of the standouts for me is andy bell and george downey who are lifelong evertonians who have already lent everton 100 million pound aj bell uh, an investment company both are worth between 500 to 400 million pound each now that doesn't necessarily blow you away no. it's when you talk about michael dell who is worth 101 billion pound is seriously being aggressive and, and and these are the words from by the way the worst publication in the world which is sky sports one of the groups I'll confirm is a partnership between two very wealthy people, very serious UK business owners who are both Everton supporters. Their bid is backed by the family office of founder of Dell Technologies. Now, I'm not being funny, right? Farhan mashiri has got a few offers on his table to go and review this. But all he has to do is to go onto Twitter and everyone knows who we want to buy our mm. football club. And this, I'm not going to say this saves his, his legacy at Everton, but he actually probably goes with his head held high. Well, the thing is, he's got to make the right decision. We all know Farhad Mashiri's decision-making since he's been at the football club. Let's just hope he goes with the best group. And obviously, listen, we're only hearing about one group of people. We're not hearing about the other people who are interested. Carrying on from what you read on Sky Sports there, I did see a video of that Carvey Solical or whatever his name is. That's now, listen, red. Yeah, I take him with a pinch of salt, to be fair. Um, yeah, it's a bit like I'll take you. But what he did say in the video also was, if it's true, that they want a quick deal. This group of people, especially George Down and Anne Bell, they want this deal done quickly so they can get Everton back on a stable foot, in their opinion, as quickly as they can. And they're also going to put a large chunk of their own money in. Now, this group of people are Evertonians, and we all know Bill Kenwright was an Evertonian. But the feeling we get from this group of people, especially Bell and Downen, is they will make us believe that nil satis nisi optimum 
actually stands for what it stands for. They will make us believe, and they know what it stands for. They know what it's like to be an Evertonian. They know what it's like, what we've had to put up with for years. And, 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 and I completely agree. And me and you were talking about some of the people that are interested in buying Everton. So you've got the, the Crystal Palace owner, Texter. He's interested. I don't think that happens because he's got a sell his stake in Palace. You've got MSP Holdings, who, you know, a billion, billion pound investment company have been interested in Spurs, interested in Everton, blah, 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 have lent us money as well. So they know Everton, they know the way that they operate, and then they know people in charge, etc. The thing that excites me about Bell and Downing and, and this thing with Dell is the fact that it, it, it allows Everton that global presence. And I know it sounds silly, but you could probably be in any country in this world and you've heard of Dell. Yeah. And and you, you could say MSP, you could even you could even you could say Megafon and USM when we were talking about Usmanov and Mashiri, but no one had heard of them outside of mm. Russia. Dell mm. is an opportunity for Global. Everton to, to, to put their brand and Dell's brand, brand together and grow everything. The, the stadium could be called the Dell Arena. We've, we've learned, we've learned that there's an opportunity where we can sell things to ourselves via different means to create more revenue so we can keep spending. Chelsea have gone and beaten that, that loophole. So all of a sudden, it's really, really exciting. Now, another thing I want to say is if this happens, it clearly says here they want this to be done quickly. Yeah. So how, how quickly how quickly can this be done? Well, listen, if, if sources are be, to be correct on what we've read, Farhad Mashiri wants to accept a bid from one of these five people in the coming days and then enter a period of, of exclusivity, right? So when you look at Jim Ratcliffe, the Ineos owner who's went to Man United, I think that was done in about seven, eight weeks from when the ball started rolling and things started to speed up on that deal. I think it was something it's like seven weeks, I think, or something like that for, you know, from from when we knew there was serious interest and the ball was rolling and, you know, the deal was signed off. When you've got people with this much money, with how clever they are, they will get this deal done as quickly as they can. Now, yeah. in my opinion, do I think it'll be done before the season begins? No, I don't think it will be. I might I might be wrong saying Jim Ratcliffe was seven weeks. I, I might be completely wrong. Do I think it's done before the season starts? Probably not. But I think once you enter a period of exclusivity, with a group of people like this, you've got no worries about it getting passed by the Premier League and stuff like that because they've got the funds in place. They'll have it in black and white. I actually think, and you said this to me today, it's probably further on than what we know this. It's probably, yeah. If they're coming out and saying they want it done as quick as possible, I think this, this deal has been going on Possibly since the thirty first of May or the first of June, the no, day no. I, I, I think it's been unwritten going on for a long time. Because, so do you think the deal's further along the line than what we're what we're hearing? I, I, I think, although there's probably been this period of exclusivity, AJ Bell lent money to Everton, so surely at that point. They're going to know some of the financial, some of the details that they're going to need to yeah. make a decision on buying Everton. So I yeah. think that ticks that box. Yeah. I think they know the mess Everton are in financially in terms of debt. And the fact that they've got a billionaire who's got a hundred billion pounds, no disrespect, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be okay. Well, we'll lose a billion quid because we know we're going to be worth a billion quid extra in five years' time. So I don't think he's going to lose sleep over that either. So all of a sudden, this potentially could be uh, the game Andy Bell. For Everton this. What? The game changer for Everton this. It could be it's a game changer, but it could be that 
uh, George and and Andy, they put in a, a an agreed amount of money into the club that maybe pays off Mashira and pays off maybe MSP, which is probably 400 million. You've got to remember, Mashiri has already had, because 777 have been putting the money in, not Everton, not Mashiri. He's already had 220 million. So yeah. the, the money that Mashiri wants, he's already got half of it. And then yeah. we need to pay back 777. And then the terms of that deal are not particularly onerous. So the facts are, it could be that Andy Bell and and George Downs, they put in 400 million between them, which is 200 million each, which is a lot of money for people that have got 500 and 400 million, it's half their wealth. But they know they're going to get it back in five years because Everton are going to progress under this Dow model, which is really aggressive. It, it, mm. it is incredibly exciting. I'm not saying any of the other consortiums aren't, by the way, because there's also apparently a global consortium that are interested in buying Everton. Now, there could be a Qatari one, which is obviously could be the global one, you know what I mean? But also, Michael, going back to what you said about Bell and the money he's got, you don't make that much money if you don't have the right people in place right. in your business, right? So, right. we all know when Farhad Mashiri come into Everton, he was Usmanov's puppet, but we kept the jobs for the boys and Bill Kenwright got kept on. And I'm not going to sit here and have a pop Bill Kenwright. God bless him, God rest his soul. But we've moved on from that. So you'd like to think when these people come into Everton, if it is these people, they will put the right people in place to run this club properly, to get the commercial side of it right, to not have to go out and get all kinds of loans and pay £30 million a year on interest for all these loans. The club will be run like a business. It will be run properly because when you've got someone who's worth over £100 billion, and you've got two other people who are worth 500 million, 900 million, whatever it is between them. You know what you're doing. You yeah. know what you're doing. So yeah. it's not just the money side of it that we've got to be excited about. And that's light that I spoke about at the end of the tunnel on a few videos ago. It's having the right people in place to manage this. And I just hope Farhad Bashiri picks the right group of people. Now, listen, one of these groups of people might have more money than these. We don't know. But what sells it for me, Michael, is they're Everton fans and they know what we've been through. They know what it's like to support Everton and they want this club back to its former glories. And I'm telling you now, if they get in with this back and they've got from the Dell family, they will give it a good go. And that's all we can ask for. It's exciting. Well, right, guys, we're leaving it there. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure you uh, get yourself some of John's mother's rapid, uh, wallpaper and I will put it up in your house for free. No problem at all. Uh, <laughs> see you soon, John. Keep smiling. Up the toughies. It's a good day. It is.